Welcome to our lecture online. Our next example involves the integral dx over x cubed times the quantity a plus bx. And again, you don't want to solve this by substituting u for a plus bx and then substituting for x and dx because you end up with a polynomial to the fourth power in the denominator, which would be very difficult to deal with. So you don't want to mess with that. Instead, let's use the concept of partial fractions. So we can write this integral as the sum of four integrals. To do that, we need to find the values of a, b, c, and d with the denominators of a plus bx, x, x squared, and x cubed. So what we do here is we're going to multiply the left side and the right side of this equation by the lowest common denominator. When we do that, we get one on the left side and we get all these terms on the right side. When we multiply them out, you can then recognize we end up with two terms on the right side with an x cubed, two terms with an x squared, two terms with an x to the first power, and one constant term. Then to find out what these values are, we begin to solve for each of these equations one at a time. For, for the constant term, we end up with one equals dA. For the x to the, let's see here, we use x to the first power term, we get ca plus db equals zero, because there's no x term on the left side, and there's two x terms on the right side, so we add up the two coefficients. We do the same thing for x to the second power and x to the third power. Again, we just add the coefficients on the right side and set it equal to zero on the left side since we don't have an x, x squared, x cubed term on the left side. When we solve for each of those equations, notice we have d equals 1 over a, c equals minus b over a squared, b is equal to b squared over a cubed, and a is equal to minus b cubed over a cubed. So, Let's plug those in here and see what we end up with. When we do that, we end up with this as our first integral, this as our second integral, our third, and our fourth integral. Now notice here we'll use the integral where we take x to the minus 2 and x to the minus 3. Those are easy to integrate. And here notice we can use the natural log here. But in this case, we're going to need a b. Here we don't need a b. So what we're going to do first is we're going to factor out a, let's see here, how about a b squared over a cubed? Let's do that. So this is equal to b squared over a cubed times, our first integral then will have a minus b dx over a plus bx. And notice we have the proper differential in the numerator because we have an a plus bx in the denominator. Here we end up with that would be plus the integral of 1 over x dx. I can just put the dx in the numerator. There we go. And that's easy to integrate. Here we end up with plus, if we factor out a b squared over a cubed, we end up with a, a over b, I believe. Yes, a over b and a negative. We need a negative in there because when we multiply this, we get b in the numerator and we get a, a squared in the denominator. Divide by... Well, actually, what I'm going to do here is write that x to the minus 2 dx, like this. And here again, we have 1 over a. So we, when we factor this out, we get plus, how about uh, a squared over b squared x to the minus 3 dx. And let's see if that is correct. Uh, when we multiply, the b squares cancel out, and we end up with a 1 over a in the denominator. OK, that's good. That's be careful here when we factor things out that we end up with the right, right equation. Let's see here. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to integrate now. So this can be integrated. This becomes b squared over a cubed times. That would be the negative of the natural log of a plus bx. Notice we have a bx here, so we need a bx in the numerator. Here we get plus the natural log of x. Here we end up with a negative, that cancels out the negative, that becomes plus a over b divided by x. And here, this becomes x squared in the denominator, but also we need a negative 2 there, so that would be minus a squared over 2b squared, because we end up with a, we have x to the minus 2 divided by the new exponent minus 2, so we need a minus 2 there. And we divide that by an x squared in the denominator, plus a constant of integration. And now we need to simplify things a little bit more. Notice we can combine these two. So this becomes equal to b squared over 
a cubed times the natural log of, since this is positive, that goes on the numerator, this is negative, that so it becomes a plus bx, like so. Typically what they do is they will turn this into a negative so they can flip this over, that's a normal way of writing it. So here we have, uh, let me multiply this through now, so we have b squared, that becomes b over a squared, so this becomes plus b squared over a squared divided by x, and let's see if that's correct. So multiply this times this. Oh, we get b to the first power. So b this times this, that becomes b. And a divided by a cubed is a squared over x. And here we get a negative. And we multiply the b squares cancel out. We end up with 1 over 2a times x squared and a constant of integration. Oop. And I think we need to bracket there because we already multiplied that through. And I think the next thing we want to do is probably simplify this out a little bit more by combining these two terms. Let me write this b over a squared in the denominator like this. And now we can combine those two terms. And so we end up with the following. We're going to make this a negative. So this becomes equal to negative b squared over a cubed times the natural log of a plus bx over x, because that tends to be the more preferred way of writing that. And now when we combine those two, we multiply this out. So the common denominator would be 2a squared x. So this is missing a 2 and an a, and this is missing an x and a 2. Well, let's see here. So that would be plus. We're missing, uh, let's see, we have an a squared. We're missing an x and a 2, so it would be 2bx minus, and here we're missing an a, just an a, okay, so this would be minus a, all divided by the common denominator of 2a squared x squared. Let me check this quickly, so the 2's cancel out, the one of the x's cancel out, and we have a b over a squared, that would work, and here we have, uh, let's see here, Multiply this times a, and multiply this by a, so we're good. And plus a constant of integration. The algebra part usually is the most tricky part of this whole thing, but this would probably be the way you'll find the answer in an integral of table book, and that would be the result when we integrate this integral right there. And that's how it's done.